Don't loop. Do not loop the music ever, Eddie. That's what I always tell myself when we do these webinars. And I always forget every time. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us here on the Domo slash Dashboard Dudes. We need to talk about whether this should be plural or not, John, when we get you on camera. Uh, how to build your personal brand, Domo brand, your personal Domo brand, apologies, uh, through content creation. Uh, and we're really going to focus hard on giving you some really cool insights. I am joined by some of my good friends, you know, Sierra Weiss and John Lee. John Lee is the main dude. The main dude. Dashboard dudes. There's the, there's the singular. I was waiting, yeah, yeah. waiting to see when that she Head, head of dudes. <laughs> Non-binary. Non that's right. That's right. And Sierra Weiss, who is uh, running along with Tess Arnold, who you'll see in the chat, uh, our innovator program here at Domo. So Sierra, thank you so much for being here as well. Yeah, so great to have everyone here. Super excited to learn from both Eddie and John today. Yeah, we're excited. We've got a lot of folks uh, on the call and excited to hear your comments and questions. This session is super exclusive uh, to a very small group of people that Sierra and John have been communicating with and had asked me to come on and, and do a little bit of presenting as well. Uh, we have good friends like Mark Snodgrass, who we know very well. We have friends like Grant Smith. Uh, Kenzie, is it Kenzie? Hi, everyone. Excited for this session. Thank you guys so much uh, for being a part of this. This is a, an area that is near and dear to my heart, um, even though it's not really part of my day job as much as it used to be. Obviously, we do these live streams. We do these webinars you know, every week, and uh, we're seeing new faces like Joseph here as well. Hi there. Um, Sierra, I, are you going to just be in the background answering questions? Do you, do you have any thoughts before we get started and I'll get John and I to, to kind of roll through it? Yeah, I'll just give a quick kickoff for everybody. So one of the most important things for us on the advocacy side as we've been building out the Domo Innovators Program is we want to make sure that we're supporting our customers with their initiatives and the ways that they want to be supported. So as I've been talking to so many of you and setting up calls and just talking over DMs within Domo Innovators, I know that a lot of you are interested in content creation to build your own brand. Um, some of you have YouTube channels. Some of you are building your... Uh, network on LinkedIn. I know a lot of you, of course, are really building your brand through the community forums. And I know that a lot of you are interested in that content creation, and you're just wondering how you can take that content creation and leverage it to really catapult your career and make yourself known in the industry as a Domo expert. So we called up some people who are real experts at Domo content creation. We've got John Lee, um, over at Dashboard Dudes, John is just a rock star when it comes to building out content, has a marketing background, and now he's just whipping up dashboards and making engaging videos, talking about the process. And then I know that all of you also um, have met and are familiar with Eddie Small on the Domo side. Eddie has a background in content creation and in video creation. And so we're going to give the time over to them. They're going to go over both the technical aspects of making content and then how, you know, some, some other skills of how you can make content that's compelling and make sure that it's in front of the right audience. Um, so we're excited. I'll pass the time over to these guys, and then we'll make sure at the end that we can answer any questions that you have, either that were submitted through Domo Innovators or that you can just drop into the chat. So I'll give the time back to Eddie. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks, Sierra. Really appreciate that. Mark, uh, Booth, hot. <laughs> he mentioned it. So let's talk about it. This is a custom sweatshirt, Mark Booth. And I know you're not a big Star Wars fan, but this is actually the Hand of the King, which is kind of a little bit of a Game of Thrones uh, Star Wars crossover. So unfortunately, Mark doesn't, he's not involved in pop culture. He literally lives under a rock. He doesn't see anything that anyone ever loves ever. So thanks for being here, Mark. Really appreciate it. He loves Star Trek. That's usually his comeback when I mention anything. Star Wars, um, which is not fun. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you being here. Excited to <laughs> excited nerd, to see you nerd. also collaborating with our friends. Yeah, Nerd Alert. That's fine. Uh, I own that with a uh, I, I own that right. That's a badge of honor for me. So, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, obviously, people know who I am, but we're really hopefully showcasing you most of this session. But I'd love for you to give just a brief introduction before we dive into the topic. Yeah, yeah. So my name is John Lee. I run this company called Dashboard Dudes. I've been using Domo since 2016. I have a lot of clients that I've helped. So, so for one, some crazy ones have been NFT horse racing. So weird. I've helped uh, 
like law firms, a lot of law firms actually, solar panel installation, safety companies. Very happy that some of my clients actually won some demo uh, innovation awards. So that's that's been amazing. And the question I'm why I'm here is because I kind of started off this way. I've done three podcasts before. I've done a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of blogs, learned a lot of things. And especially when Eddie and I talk about equipment, script writing, distribution, all this stuff, we're going to show you both. And Eddie and I have a lot of similar pain points, especially on the equipment stuff. And we're going to talk to you about kind of some stuff that we have learned to help you out the best for your personal brand. So I'm really, really happy to show you some pitfalls that you can just escape right away. Love that. Uh, let's let's dive in. We have a very okay. intimate group today. So again, do not be shy. Leave us your comments, your questions, your suggestions, your feedback, anything that you may feel would help the group into the comments and chat section uh, where you're watching this video. So it's super excited to, to continue that. I'm actually going to uh, share for the first time. I'm sharing my screen on one of these Domo webinars. It's been a while since I've done this, but uh, I, I appreciate John giving his background. So I'll give you a little bit of mine. Uh, essentially, this is kind of where I started. I was uh, a teacher. I, I taught for eight years in the classroom in audio video production. So this is some photos from, from Eddie back in the day <laughs> as an educator and some of his students. Um, but my entire um, being for a long time was introducing students to audio and video production tools. So we built a radio station while I was at, uh, at the high school. We were building the process of building a TV station, a community public access channel. Um, but I wanted to really focus on giving students, and we had a rural community, about 500 students at this high school, so very small high school, uh, trying to give them real world experiences. And there was a lot of evolution on what video equipment looked like. And I'll kind of dive into that a little bit as we, we move forward. But a lot of that experience led to loving educational technology and moving on to um, work for some educational technology companies. And, and my time in education was about creating some content for uh, a little company called Instructure or Canvas LMS. So if you've done any virtual learning these days, you may be familiar with Canvas. Uh, I was a huge fan as the time at the time working at a college and career center. And I started a podcast with my good friend, Marcus Painter, called the Canvas Casters Podcast. It was essentially a way for me to connect users to a topic that we loved, which at that point, it was the learning management system, Canvas. And we were never active in our community forums. We were never writing blogs. We weren't, you know, writing articles for uh, ed tech magazines or online forums. We just decided, like, this is an avenue for us. Um, I have a face for radio. Radio has been my passion previous. So I'm just like, I don't really want to be on camera a whole lot. Uh, so let's do a podcast. That's easy. That's accessible and found some really cool free tools, which I'll share with you today. Um, if that interests you, but we just called ourselves out of the blue. We, we knew there was a space to fill, uh, to do some content creation. So we just called ourselves the canvas casters, the unofficial, uh, canvas LMS podcast. Fast forward three years later, we are both working for Canvas, and Canvas actually bought the intellectual property for Canvas Caster, so now they own it, um, and we got a nice little check. And I know a lot of folks around here are probably saying, we would love to create some things like this one day and see them blow up, but it, it was a really fun time. It got a ton of exposure, um, but it was you know my journey into finding ways to create content that was adjacent to um, an industry that I was really passionate about. And it all just started with finding free tools and um, free ways to be able to get my voice heard and to also give exposure to others in kind of an interesting format. Now, podcasts have blown up, obviously, over the last five or six years. So it was probably a, it was probably just really good timing on my part. Uh, John and I had some time earlier to, to kind of talk about this, but I, uh, I and Sierra is going to laugh because I, I'm going to bring Sierra back because I know she's a big TikTok person. She's learned a lot from TikTok. So we're just going to ask her to cover her ears for the next three or four minutes as we talk a little bit about vertical video. Uh, and Mark Booth will also tell you that I, I'm just not a big TikTok guy. I don't I, vertical video for instruction or learning or uh, introducing folks to content is just blown up over the last, um, you know, 
two or three years and, and TikTok obviously is a big part of this, but I used to do this, this pitch when I was teaching people about creating, you know, video content, just be careful with vertical video, right? Depending on what format that it's going to be digested in is going to really, um, it's going to really depend uh, on how you film it. And if you're filming it because you're used to filming things for TikTok and all of a sudden they're watching on YouTube, things are going to look very different. So I have this really fun video uh, that I used to show um, I, when I presented about, you know, using video engagement in classrooms, a uh, really fun video that I'd like to share with you today. So we'll do that now. Okay. This video didn't have to look this way. It could have been prevented. Say no to vertical videos. Vertical videos happen when you hold your camera the wrong way. Your video will end up looking like crap. <laughs> there are more and more people addicted to making vertical videos every day. It's not crack or nothing, but it's still really bad. There are two different kinds of people who are afflicted with VVS. The first group treats the videos they shoot like pictures. They don't mean any harm. They just don't understand that while you can turn a picture, you can't really turn a video. The other group is people who don't give a sh Vertical video syndrome is dangerous. Motion pictures have always been horizontal. Televisions are horizontal. Computer screens are horizontal. People's eyes are horizontal. We aren't built to watch vertical videos. I love vertical videos! Nobody cares about you! If this problem's left unchecked, YouTube will begin showing four videos at once, just to save bandwidth. Leatherboxed vertical videos would be the size of a postage stamp. And it will spread everywhere. Movie screens have always been horizontal. If vertical videos become accepted, movie theaters will have to be tall and skinny. And all the movie theaters would have to get torn down and rebuilt. And by the time they were rebuilt, Mina Kulitz would be old and ugly. And birds would crash into them and die. And we will all get stiff necks from looking up. And no one will sit in the front row ever again. And George Lucas will re-release Star Wars again. The skinny edition. I was never really able to tell the story that I wanted to tell. This was a great chance for me to experiment with a new technology. You're a jerk. Every time a mobile device is used to record video, the temptation is there. Just say no. Say no to George Lucas. Say no to old Mila Kunis. Say no to vertical videos. And if you see someone doing it, say, You're not shooting that right, dummy! Okay, that's my uh, PSA on a vertical video. John and I got a real good laugh about that one earlier. Uh, because it is something that <laughs> it is something that is there, right? Uh, Grant Smith says, "Mark, did you see the Star Trek reference, guys? You gotta you gotta ease up on the Star Trek Star Wars stuff. Mark loves it because of that. Uh, <laughs> I love this. My husband just asked if I was really working. Yes, this is work. This is work to us, anyways. Uh, when it comes to creating content, um, yeah, but yeah, hours. That's one of my favorite one of my favorite videos to to show folks when we're talking about." you know, video content, ingesting video content. And really, I think um, if there's a mantra to get out of, of what I'm going to show you over the next 10 minutes is, you know, creating professional content doesn't mean you need professional equipment. Uh, I have spent a, a really long time in my life uh, basically going from a number of different eras in creating content and I went from, you know, teaching high school students where we were using some of the most professional, you know, video switching equipment that, that we could afford <laughs> at, our, at our small little high school, as well as some really uh, high tech, you know, thousands of dollar Sony shoulder mount cameras to folks literally shooting with this, 
right? In their pocket. And that transition, um, I can tell you from a guy who went to school for, for, you know, video and audio production and then came out and taught video audio production. This wasn't having a phone film things was out of the question uh, because the quality was terrible. You couldn't make out anything that you saw. And there definitely became a time in year six, seven and eight while I was teaching where the phones had caught up to the technology that folks were going out and spending thousands of dollars with. And I was actually having students, my, my 15, 16, 17 year old kids coming back into the studio, going to a ball game, shooting an interview, uh, finding folks to talk with, bringing their phones in and importing them into you know, the laptops that we were providing for them. So that transition was an interesting one for me because again, heart of hearts, like I felt like this was the way, right? This is the way that you provide professional content. You have to use the best equipment that we can afford. You have to become a production house. When all of a sudden people were carrying around, you know, 13 inch laptops and phones and now they're creating content that's blowing me away, right? It's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you could do that. And now you have the time to do it um, was really, really interesting. So um, I do want you to take that away, which is don't feel like because you don't have the fanciest video editor, you don't have the fanciest camera, uh, you don't have, you know, lavalier mics and you don't, you don't walk around with like GoPro mo mounts to attached to your car that you're not going to be able to make good content for anything, whatever that may be as a hobbyist or if you're making domo content, which is kind of what we're here for today. But um, please know that a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to show you are free tools or freemium tools, very close to free um, that will help you uh, be better at production. But I think it really starts with the phone. Um, I will tell you right now in this current studio setup, I have one light. I am using my iPhone in continuity camera mode, which is better than any camera that's going to be on a laptop. And then I use my Yeti Nano. And John's going to talk a little bit more about equipment when we get down to the bottom. But I want to show you some free tools that will kind of make your video stand out. Uh, there's a tool that came onto the scene really, really quick. And I know a lot of folks are using it. I don't know if Grant or Mark or Elliot, I think it was Elliot who has been uh, using Loom for some things and we kind of, you know, collaborate. I've been using Loom since they started, uh, which is one of the really cool screen casting tools for video instruction. Um, it's just use loom.com. Super easy. In fact, I am sharing this entire Chrome screen. Let me, let me stop sharing so I can give you a quick demo. This is one of those demo on the fly things that we try to do. And everybody's like, don't do that live. Uh, I'm going to do it live always. So let's go in, let's go back into the actual window so you guys can see the whole window. And uh, Loom can be a Chrome attachment or you can just go to the website. But this is literally the aha moment when I talk to folks about using video for video instruction or creating some engaging videos is it's very simple. You click here, literally says what camera do you want to use? What microphone are you going to use? You hit start recording give you a countdown. Remember to look at the camera. Remember to smile. My camera is way up high. So I have a, I'm an issue with this continuity mount. I need to probably change it, but it's so high up. So now we're recording a video. Remember to smile. Remember to be engaging. Remember to talk through what you'd like to do. And then literally when you hit stop, oh, I'm trying to do it through StreamYard. Let me actually go to the window and try to do it. It loads it up. Now here's the best part. I haven't done anything else. This is the best part about using Loom is you literally open up your Microsoft Outlook or Gmail or whatever you want, and you just go control V and it can, it will embed this video and link into your email. So if you are someone that is teaching your staffs uh, or teaching YouTube in general to help build your brand, uh, you can actually take this link directly, copy and paste it wherever you'd like, and then hit enter. And all of a sudden you are to the video. And people can make reactions. You can see how many people watch. There can be a transcript. Uh, you can edit this video right inside of Loom, which is really, really cool. So you can actually split and trim the video inside of Loom. Very simple, very easy to make those splits and trims. Loom is my all-time favorite. As you guys may have known, we launched a little project called Domo Central, where it was a new community, a new advocacy platform, our community blog, our knowledge base on Domo. To 
reach the staff and internal engagement, I use Loom for all of the videos and then stitch them together. So it's one long form video and it's six short form videos. So I'm trying to be really specific about creating content for different audiences. Someone may sit down and watch all 20 minutes. Not everybody, not most people, but I have that option for them. If you'd like to see it from start to finish, you want to see the entire Domo Central experience, here it is. If you want to see community, here's the two minute video. If you want to see advocacy, here's the two minute video. So breaking that up into short forms and using Loom has allowed me to do that. Loom has a free version. It's free to use. Now, if you get really deep into the woods and use it, it's like $10 a month. It's not a huge, it's not a huge commitment but this is a tool that I use very regularly. You can use it for meetings. You can use it for YouTube videos because you can then download this video after you've saved it uh, from the edit. You can download this video and then put it wherever you would like. So wherever you want to put that video. Now, this take a time. If you do have a long mini video, like a 10 minute or 20 or 25 minute video, it does take some time to render once you download it. But after you've got that rolling, easy peasy. So uh, it is one of my all-time favorite tools. Whoa, there me, there I am in Echo, or as I like to call, the Inception video. All right, we've got some audio engagement tools. Uh, there will be links. I'm sharing this, uh, obviously, with folks in the chat. Um, uh, when I'm finished, I'll go ahead and share the link to this presentation. All you have to do is click these icons. It will send you to the page. Uh, if you are like, Eddie, I don't want to see my face. I'm okay with that, too, because I'm that guy. Uh, you can use Soundtrap uh, to do some uh, podcasting. You can actually edit multiple people uh, on a Soundtrap, uh, what's called a multi-track editor in audio. So you can have one person talking and then another person. You can put some music in, some transitions, and create a podcast. And then you can go to our good friends at Anchor and Spotify, and you can upload that audio file to the world. Anchor is free. Soundtrap is free. Uh, now, if you get into the woods, again, probably have to pay some sort of monthly subscription, uh, but these are free tools that you have available to you that you can use. And Sierra is right. We're going to distribute the document here at the end that should have a lot of these together. Eddie, what in the world does Domo use to do all of these fun events? Um, there's a thing called YouTube <laughs> where we obviously stream a lot of our content, uh, OBS, uh, which is where we are streaming or where I'm using some different tools for video where I can kind of tweak some audio. I can have multiple audio channels, multiple video channels. Um, if you're really, really big into like multi-camera stuff, um, that's an OBS setting and then StreamYard. I did, or, and then StreamYard, which I don't have on here, uh, but I'll include a link to that as well. StreamYard allows me to basically go live and distribute to as many platforms as I like. It is a paid tool. Um, but something that we love, Grant, plus one for OBS, absolutely 100%. Uh, I do like OBS just to kind of dial in what we have. And continuity camera can be a little finicky. So OBS can kind of help you see exactly um, what that camera sees. So that's kind of me for nuts and bolts and free tools and, and my kind of take on what video production looks like. Uh, obviously, it has evolved a lot since I've moved out of the classroom four years ago. But I do think a lot of these uh, tools are still very applicable. Um, nothing has changed. <laughs> there are tons of them out there. These are the ones, and, and John will kind of mention this in his in mm -hmm. session as well. These are the ones that we have found have been the easiest for us. You might find something different that you're like, I like it better because it does X, Y, Z. Sure, use that one. Um, but the ones that we have found doing a lot of the content that we've been able to do uh, has been the most successful for us. And that's what we're showing you today. So um, appreciate everybody. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I'll try to answer them. I'm going to relinquish the time. I don't ever get to present on these. Uh, so that was interesting. Thank you, Sierra, uh, for letting me do that. Uh, John, I'm going to, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Uh, we're right. going to share your screen. Are you, are you starting right off the bat with the screen? No, I'm going to sh uh, just okay. share my screen because I'm going to do a little behind the scenes actually. Sounds good. All right. I appreciate that. Okie dokie. All right, everybody. Love, love being here. Love helping out. So I agree with everything Eddie just said. I'm going to show you some of the behind the scenes equipment that I use and why. And let's talk about it and again. Just like Eddie said, don't let having the best equipment or anything stop you. That's a big mental block that a lot of people have. Just go make it. You know, I learned in school, you should be so lucky that anybody even watched it. So just go make it. That's what you got to do. Get your reps in. So I'm going to take my camera off and I want to show you some stuff that's here. So for instance, this is my backdrop. 
and I'm just in my office right now. And why I have a backdrop is because while you might want a backdrop, you definitely don't need it. I saw some people who had questions on a green screen and all that stuff. Maybe if you really need it. The reason why you have a backdrop is because if you are close to a wall where somebody can see art or you have something, a poster up and you don't want people to get distracted, that's why you would want to do a backdrop or to keep some consistency. In addition, if you have, if you're shooting and behind you is like a kitchen or something, you have people walking back and forth or, or a pet or whatever, having the backdrop helps in that reason, but you definitely do not need it. Now, I also want to show you some lighting. So I use right here, if you can see it, these lights right here, this is a little O light. This is another light that I use here. And I have this big sucker over here. You definitely do not need that big one. That is just there. But the reason why we have lights is we shoot at these angles. If you have an O light that's right at your face, that's really for like a makeup tutorial where you need to put a lot of light on your face. You want soft lights to give you some depth perception of what's happening. So that's kind of just some little, little things on, on lighting. Audio. I use this, this guy, this Yeti mic. Eddie, I think you also have a Yeti mic that you said you use as well. When I'm recording real stuff, real content, I have it right here so you can't see it. Audio, I would say, if anything, is probably what you want to invest in. I've seen a lot of videos where the content is great and, and the, the, the video looks fine. Lighting is not really that big of an issue, but the audio is terrible. And you just sound so far away or it's really hard to hear. You got to jack up the volume and it's just not the best. So I would say, if anything, invest in a, in a good mic. Hey, if you're doing any type of far distance stuff from your phone or whatnot, I use a Bluetooth microphone right here. It's going to be in the link to some equipment that we have. And Eddie and I have talked a lot about mics and which ones work really well for us and which have been just a complete waste of money. But having a having a Bluetooth mic can help out. If you are shooting a podcast and if it happens to be in person, you don't need to get a room with all that stuff, just like a, a nice quiet room. But I will use a splitter right here. So I'll put this into my phone. If you have an iPhone, you just get one of those adapters. And then I will take this Lavier mics like Eddie was talking about. And I'll put one into this part, no problemo, and I got the other one on me. And that way you have only one audio file that you have to use instead of dealing with two different audio files and cutting them in GarageBand and all the other junk. So we're not gonna talk about that. Okay, cool. So that's just some equipment that I use. I wanna show you the behind the scenes. Let's talk about script stuff. So I'm gonna talk about this first. We're gonna watch a little video and I'm gonna walk through a script and being a little bit more engaging. So if you are shooting any type of video content or even audio, the framework that I use is comes it comes from the Harmon brothers, which I really like, and this is how it goes. Hook, problem, solution, call to action, validation, call to action again, outro, whatever. You have a whole worksheet, you're gonna see it. Again, let's watch a video and you're gonna see how this goes into play. Hook, problem, solution, call to action, validation, call to action again, outro. Cool. All righty. I'm going to share my video. Oh, you got it, Eddie? Okay, cool. And let's play it. This is a video. So I own, if you don't know this, I own a martial arts gym. Sarah knows that she's challenged me. It's called Dojo Storming. She's challenged me for my throne. And this was, yeah, she, she's not going to win. And this is a video that I shot during COVID. So I want you to think about what's the hook, the problem I'm trying to show, the solution, call to action, validation, why do, why do I even matter? Call to action again, outro, All right? Let's do it. This is for our initiation fee. This is for our cancellation fee. This is for the merchandise you have to buy. And this is for the annual contract. Welcome to Chicago School of Grappling, a martial arts gym that gives you a welcoming learning environment with great students and instructors without requiring you to buy an annual contract buy merchandise or any other hidden fees. Other martial arts gyms give you one free class and then expect you to sign an annual contract, buy their merchandise, or continue to pay if you can't go to their gym or even afford it. Imagine each of these rolls of toilet paper is a different fee. Here's your initiation fee, annual contract, required merchandise, and cancellation fee. For us, it's just one monthly fee. No wonder their plans are so crappy. In fact, one student emailed me from another gym and said that when he tried to quit his other gym membership, they sent him a long letter saying that they were one big family 
And then they said, if you do want to break your contract, it's $300. I don't know about you, but that's not how I treat family. And then if you want to cancel, you have to mail a letter, a physical letter. Other gyms don't show their prices online because they're shady. For us, our prices are online. We're transparent. You can buy it whenever you want. So if signing an annual contract doesn't feel right to you, click the link or go to chicagoschoolofgrappling.com and get seven days free on us. Still not sure? Well, you better be kidding because we got a ton of stars. Five stars on Google, five stars on Facebook, five stars on Yelp. Eli says, I'm new to jiu-jitsu, and it's so great to learn a new martial art in a great place with a good group of hardworking teammates. CSG has taken care of us all during the quarantine like none other with free virtual classes, free weekly live virtual classes, and payment suspension for all members. Yeah, we aren't charging you if you can't use the gym. Dan writes, very professional staff, great training and a safe environment, and best of all, they had an on-site shower. Loved it. That's right, come for the jitsu, stay for the shower. Since 2015, we've had over 650 people sign up to get their free trial to come to our gym. Plus, if you submit your email right now, not only will you get seven free days when we reopen, but we'll also give you free access to our JitFit Live classes, so you can do that whenever you want. Okay, so you actually wanna make a fist, make a fist and put on the back so you can push against his head, your chin's gonna go over and you're gonna squeeze and shrug, and then when Jake feels it, he's gonna tap, he's gonna tap. Oh boy, oh boy. Cut, cut the camera. Okay, okay, all right, cool. Uh, can we show the screen that has the framework, please? And hopefully you enjoyed that video. That, that was actually a, a good one. So let me, let me give you some results of that video. I shot that during quarantine. Orange, Orange Theory, if you know that, Jim, they have a cost per lead of $20 a lead. And when I shot that video, and this has like multiple, view, a lot of these hundred views um, or actually thousands of it, but our cost per lead was 444. I remember that number because it's all four. So $20 cost per lead versus 444, which means the content was very, very engaging. So here is that framework. And let's talk about all these pieces. And when you're making content, it's something to think about. It, whether it's answering questions about something on the Domo community forum, or even if it is just promoting yourself, Here's a great framework to help you out. So the first thing, the hook, you need to grab somebody's attention. You got one to five seconds to do it. Otherwise, people just scroll. Like Eddie was saying, all these videos are shot vertically, but there's just so much stuff out there that people just are going to lose interest real fast. So here's what I normally see, it, whether it be answers to Domo from the community forum or just whatever, our pe people just go right into the answer sometimes. And you might want to set up the hook. And the hook can be anything by being funny, by being just out there or just even proposing the question back. So for instance, if somebody had a question and they're like, hey, how do I change all my dates in an ETL to be rounded to the month? If you just went into the answer and you go, okay, here's how to do it, it's not as engaging. You might wanna say things like, a lot of people are asking, how do we change dates from a regular format to rounded to the closest month? I'm gonna show you how to do that, boom. Just something like that can help with the hook to get people drawn in a little bit. You, you can say, I'm going to show you how to do that without any SQL code necessary. Get somebody drawn into a little bit more. The problem. Now what we want to do is we want to explain the pain point. So why does it, why is it a big problem? So I'm sorry, let me go back. And the hook was obviously what you saw was the kick to the face. Uh, so if anybody doesn't like it, you're getting kicked to the face. <laughs> yeah. And the problem. So the problem is you need to express the pain, not just what the problem is. So the pain could be, hey, do you ever have dates that you have in Domo and you have a data set and you need to round it to a month because in the pivot table function, you want it to be a month format, but you, you can't do it or whatever. Well, instead of having to do that in Google Sheets or in Excel and bring it back and having to go back and forth, I'm just going to show you how to do it straight right away in the ETL. Boom you're kind of describing the pain point of the problem. So my problem for the gyms or other gyms was that all these other gyms had annual contracts and during COVID people were paying money and they couldn't break their contract. So then you would show the solution. What's the solution? The solution is we're gonna use the formula function or we're gonna use a group by or whatever. In my context, it was saying that we only do month to month. You can cancel whenever you want. There's no initiation fee, no cancellation fee. We're done easy peasy. Cool. So that's kind of helping you figure out how you want to answer some questions or present yourself for script writing, storytelling. Now, here's the biggest thing that I think will affect most of the people on this call, the call to action. 
So I own a company, right? My call to action is mainly I'm trying to get people to give me work for helping them with Domo, or I have a course, an online course that you can take to learn how to use Domo. That's my main call to action. But what if you already work for a company and you don't have a product like that's remote? You don't really want your bosses or anything to kind of find out what you're doing because you know you don't want any conflict of interest. I would say for you, your best call to action should be putting your LinkedIn profile and putting the link to your LinkedIn profile. So I'm going to share mine to give you an example. Let me do this one. Just give me one minute. There we go. Cool. Awesome. So here is my handle, linkedin.com slash in slash the John Lee. I just like rhyming. And you would you should be putting that, I think, if anything, for your call to action at the end of all of your videos. And you can just say it. So when I'm, whenever I'm shooting to answer a question on the Domo community forum, I'm actually doing a different call to action. I'm doing this one. I'm telling people, hey, if you like that, if you like that answer, I have a multiple answers where I have all these videos where I've answered questions. You can come here to see them, check it out, and whatever. Um, and I think Mark Snodgrass, you do the same with video. So it's something else to also kind of keep in mind what your call to action is. What do you want them to go do? Do you want them, do you want traffic? Do you want follows? Whatever it may be. Cool. Okay. Validation piece. So the validation piece, I'm going to stop this one. Sorry. Uh, can we show the screen again with the outline, please? Sorry, I took the screen away. The validation piece is so who are you? Why should you matter? In the video I showed, my validation was I had five stars on Yelp, on Google, on Facebook, all this stuff. So for your validation, it might be, hey, I've been using Domo since X number of years. I've been a Domo speaker. I won a Domo Innovation Award, whatever. Giving people just some insights into who you are to trust you, uh, whether it be subject matter expertise, domain authority, all that type of stuff, right? Call to action one more time after that, which again is like, hey, if you want to learn more, come to my website, find me on LinkedIn, chat me, find me on the Domo community, message me, say hi, whatever. And then the outro. Now the outro here, I'm actually a big proponent of the outros. A lot of people don't. They just stop at the call to action. And they're done. The outro is a nice warm send off. And what you can do is you could be funny. Like on mine, I have pumping that guy's legs. I'm like, oh, cut the camera. Or you could be very inspirational. You could say, Hey, I promise you, the more you do this, you'll get better at Domo. It's not that daunting. So reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. Something small like that is just a very inspiring message to help people want to commit to that call to action. Cool. So that's kind of the framework of what we can do for a script or storytelling when we're shooting any type of video or even audio on how to tell a story. Now, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm very happy to, to respond. The one other thing that I want to mention is distribution. So what? You made all this stuff. Who cares? Who's going to see it? So some pieces on that, I know, Sierra, you can talk that too, is video, YouTube. That's obviously number one. You got to put in your tags. That's very, very important, your description, so that YouTube can kind of read it and pick it up. You put it in there. I would heavily suggest you put things into you put YouTube into playlists too to just make it a little bit easier and it's just not all over the place title it correctly if you are shooting video as well you can put that on LinkedIn and on TikTok now I'm not the biggest fan of the vertical for how quick it is but I am a fan of how TikTok works because TikTok allows you to shoot longer form video instead of just uh, Instagram which is limited to like a minute sometimes so it's good to figure out your platforms. Then when you do it on TikTok, you can also have transcriptions and go put it elsewhere. So that's something. You don't have to do it, but but whatever. Just put, go put it on those pieces. For articles, so I write blogs on Domo stuff or on data stuff, and I produce it, and I will go put them on medium.com. If you know Medium, it's another good way just to kind of disseminate what you're trying to preach and to get some other followers to, to see what's happening with you. And the last one for me for distribution is a podcast. If you're doing any type of podcast, I wrote it in here and, and Eddie referenced it. Anchor, I think is the best. Anchor, you can put it on Anchor and it instantly distributes it to Apple Podcasts, to all these other platforms as well, to SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, obviously, and these other ones. Now with podcasts, I'll tell you something here. I've done three podcasts before and Eddie, back me up or feel free to add in your insights too. But 
you have to be consistent. I call them my two C's that I've learned from podcasts, consistency and compounding. Consistency means if you're producing an episode every week, you got to commit to a week. If you're going to miss a week, go put an old episode in and just say like, that's from this time. Because when I've done podcasts, when I missed a week, or we did it every two weeks, when I missed every two weeks, a listenership dropped by like 80%, drops up by a ton. Eddie, do you have anything you want to say on yeah, that? Yeah, uh, so I've done a ton of research on the on the podcast um, space. Obviously, having a, a podcast that had you know hundreds of thousands of downloads and reached a global audience um, for a few years, it, it it's something I just I'd read a lot about. And and what I think the biggest thing to know about podcasting is those loyal that the listeners are loyal. Uh, and what that means is like if I'm committing and subscribing. Right. It's going to fill up my feed <laughs> on a right. podcast and someone that loves podcasts may have five, eight, 12 podcasts they're listening to. So if I'm committing to subscribing and you consistently fall down my list because you're not refreshing your content, then I don't even know you exist. One. Um, and two, like, like John said, you're going to do every two weeks. If you're going to do every month, whatever your distribution calendar looks like, stick with it. There are some podcasts that I've listened to that have went away um, because they just stopped producing content. And then like three months later, they're like, oh, we decided to do a, an episode. And all of a sudden they pop up on my feed. Um, I may listen to it, but if if you're not pumping, then I'm not seeing it because everybody else is doing, you know, once a week or twice a week right. um, or once a month. And they're, they're being, you know, filtered to the top. And most podcast players are that way, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple or Google. Um, so yeah, the, it is a very loyal audience. They will stick with you until the end. You can miss one or two, but if your schedule is like so spread out that you're not like joining the ranks of others in my personal podcast um, playlist, then there's really, there's really no reason for anybody to, to keep listening because you're just not there. Right. Right. I, yeah, you just got to be consistent and notify if you're not going to be. The second C that I have is compounding. So like what Eddie said, being loyal, what's going to happen is let's say you produce your, you make episode five and you've have all these other episodes in the past, people are going to binge. So they're going to listen to episode five, but they're also going to go back to episode one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four. So you're going to see a lift overall. So you want to try to make uh, it the best you can be. At, it doesn't have to stop you, but try to put your best effort into it because you're going to get people who are just going to listen to all your historical stuff. Cool. All right, uh, last couple of things, and then I'll, I'll be done. We'll open up for any questions, and we're happy to answer it, is two big things for you. So two big takeaways from me. Don't let equipment stop you. Uh, people are always just saying, well, I, I don't know. I don't have the best. Eddie is completely right. I've watched phones be so good. I do all these cooking videos. I shoot on my phone. I'll go edit it in Final Cut Pro or iMovie or something. But it's it's amazing how fast phones have come up. You know, get audio. Just you can buy the, like, these lab ear mics for like seventeen dollars. They're not they're not that bad. Or you have a Yeti mic. It's gonna be great. And take some time to edit it out too. And then the last thing is really focus on your call to action. So I'm gonna show you right. I'm gonna put it in here right now. My call to action would be, I would love it if you could follow me or friend me on LinkedIn. Here we go. Or just say hi in the Domo community. And that's what your call to action should be. So think about what you always want your call to action to be for the, for the future. And then always put that into your content, your videos, podcasts, whatever you're doing. All right. That's me. If anybody has any questions, let's talk. Well, that's great, John. Yeah, I, we do have a couple questions we'll probably get to. Um, Sierra was kind enough to, to throw in an innovator challenge uh, to some of our folks here. Um, so we'll kind of start there. If you do have a question, uh, please 100% drop them in the chat and comment section. We are happy to answer them as we're going through here. Uh, this question came in from the Innovator Challenge. How do I keep users coming back to my channel? It's a great question. John, what do you think? What are, I think it's exactly doing? what you said before, just consistency, mm -hmm. just, just putting it out. Even if it's not the best, you just got to do it because people are going to watch it. I have definitely been hit by missing because I took a vacation. So now what I'll do, I'll schedule, I'll schedule release dates on YouTube or 
on LinkedIn or something. Hootsuite is great, H-O-T-U-E, Hoot, S-U-I-T-E, if you use that uh, to help schedule some content. But you just have to be consistent. That's what you have to do. Yeah, you you certainly, it, it. I think the fear of like, it won't be good enough or if I don't get a thousand views, um, then why, what am I wasting my time for? I, that fear is definitely relevant to a lot of folks that are trying this out for the first time. Um, and I will tell you that regardless of, of what you're producing or, or how you're getting the content out there, if you are consistently putting out content, you will see um, dividends from it. I, I know that I know for a fact we were very aggressive when we started our podcast and I recently started a YouTube channel. It's like, you got to keep putting stuff out there, you know, it, twice a month, uh, three times, you know, once a week, twice a week, whatever, whatever you decide your cadence is going to be, whatever allows you, you know, some time to, to, um, put into it, uh, will definitely come back because if folks are seeing your stuff, they'll be like, I'll, I'll give that a try. I'll give that a right. watch or I'll give that a listen. Um, but if they're not seeing your stuff because you're just afraid there, the fear stuff has to go out the window if it's something you're really serious about and hope to accomplish. So, right. um, but definitely, um, you know, promote, throw it on all channels, you know, throw it on your personal channels, like on Facebook. I know a lot of people don't do a lot of stuff like that on Facebook, but I've even found just being on Facebook to my friends and family being like, created another video or we just launched a podcast. They may not be, ed they were not educators at the time, or they may not be interested in some of the content I'm putting together on the YouTube, but they'll watch it because hopefully it's me right. and they want to support. So definitely, uh, definitely throw that out there as well. Another question from the innovator challenge. How do you keep a constant stream of content going? How do you not run out of ideas? How do you decide what content is valuable? Uh, how do you know people don't already know this? So uh, my answer is this in marketing world, it's called a content calendar. And uh, you want to figure out when you want to release. So Mondays at 6 a.m. are usually the most packed. So that's when people consume stuff. But at the same time, you're competing with a bunch of people. So you kind of figure out like, hey, this Tuesday works. So what I figured out for me personally is that... Uh, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday worked better for me than Monday, actually. Monday just is really hit hard. Thursday is great, actually, for me. Friday, Saturday, like, don't even bother for, for me from seeing engagement with stuff. The question, though, of like, hey, what do I, what do I know what to do? Uh, Domo Community Forum, right? If you answer a question, you have a always uh, ample source material. So answer, answer somebody's question, make a video about how you did it, and then go post it. I think a problem is sometimes in Domo community, how I answer questions is I use Loom. I do exactly what Eddie did. I take Loom, I show it, I put it on YouTube, and then I put it right back onto my site. So now I have this cycle going, as opposed to writing all that stuff. But who, not a lot of people want to read a bunch of SQL code, but if you can show them the video, then you can do a little bit better. So that's one. When we did the community events where we've met up, that gave me a ton of inspiration. I saw how we were doing things in Outlook. I'm like, all right, I just wrote an article then on five ways to embed Microsoft into, or Domo into Microsoft using Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Teams. And I showed how to do it through Teams. So like just these things help you out too. And the question of, well, how do I know somebody does, what do they already know the answer to this? Doesn't matter. If somebody already has the answer, there's probably somebody who doesn't. And that's who you're trying to target. You're trying to win those people. So hopefully that gives you some, some insights. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that whatever you decide to produce to, to grow your personal brand, you walk away with knowing that not everyone knows everything that you know. And right. even if you reach one person. So I, I talked to John a little bit about this earlier when we were talking about, you know, the folks that were registered for the event. And we know a lot of folks and there are some new folks and, um, you know, how many people might show up to this. Uh, we we're just kind of riffing off of that. And it's like if one person were to walk away and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to start using Loom," or, uh, you know, John showed me how to use a proper microphone. I'm going to start doing that in my videos. Oh, Eddie reminded me that I need to look at my camera when I'm talking, even though he does it poorly because his camera is mounted super high. Um, but Eddie reminded me that I need to do that. I need to smile while I'm talking. If one person walks away, we're happy, right? Like that's to me, if we can find ways to, to help you create better content, 
um, it, it kind of makes the community better. Right. right. Um, so definitely don't let that be a, don't let that be a distraction. And, and I'll, I'll add on to this too. Think about your audience. Who are you targeting? Mark just wrote something great too, right? About the community source material, easy stuff. Are you targeting people who are really, really good? And maybe, maybe you want to get into the weeds about hard SQL. I've, I've watched uh, Grant, Elliot, Mark, I've watched your videos where you're very good in technical, like that's a great audience. And there's also an audience of people who have no, never knew what an ETL was ever. That's actually a video I just made with one of my clients, Natalie from Better Earth, before she even touched Domo, never knew what that meant at all. And so you just kind of try to figure out who are you targeting and what's the group you want to hit. And there are definitely use cases for both. So don't be afraid of, of uh, feeling like you're isolating somebody out. I love this. I love this question. Very timely. Um, thank you, Sierra, for this innovators challenge, which seems to be uh, filling some time here for folks that have that have shown up. How to create content to build a brand and also show expertise, but not come across as a know it all. Here's the deal. I built a paper patio uh, five years ago um, at my house. I did it myself, and I was intimidated because I'd never done anything like that before in my life. And what I found was that I was very comfortable watching any video that showed me how to get the job done, right? Regardless of the presenter <laughs> and the professionalism of the video. What I mean by that is um, I was watching videos and this is in no way supposed to be offensive to anyone because I know we live in that world, but I was watching a video at some point with a dude with a cell phone who was underneath like his house <laughs> talking about how to like level for the paver padding was like, what you're going to do is you're going to get down here and you're going to look at this and you're going to go. And it was terrible, but it showed me how to do it. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the know-it-all thing, the worrying about like coming across as like that, that went out the window years ago. <laughs> we are all just comfortable, like clicking play on anything that we see, as long as it will help us right. get the job right. done. Right. Right. That, that's the name of the game, being being helpful. And I would say there are little, little, like, I'm actually more likely to not watch a video if I find the audio is terrible. Like, yes, I will just be like, I is, don't want to watch this. It is so contingent. I, I can't stress enough. This is another thing we talked about when we started the podcast. I told my buddy Marcus, I said, I don't care if what we say is garbage. No one wants to listen to us, but we're buying new mics, both right. of us right now, right. today. Right. Right. Because if the audio is garbage, no one will watch right. on a video. So right. audio is so important. $100 Yeti Nano microphone. I have Easy. the one that John showed, which is like the, the step up, the Yeti Pro. Um, and then they have like a bigger one, which is like the Yeti X or whatever. <laughs> it's um, just so yeah, yeah. So you can go from a very small and like, I love our Yetis. Uh, they just got recently bought by LG. So if you're looking for oh, a blue that. Yeti. You'll, you'll find them in the LG lineup now. Um, but they're like the blue microphone is like 20 bucks. It's super cheap. Their little blue snowball uh, microphone. They're still selling that, uh, which is a very high quality microphone. So uh, just, you have to invest. John was playing a little show and tell. Um, I also, this is something I did this year and I, I promised like, hey, if I ever get a little bit of cash rolling around, I bought the, these are my DGI uh, lavalier. So these oh, are fun. lavaliers. Yeah. That will actually like, I clip, so you'll see these on some videos. You'll yeah, see yeah, they're, yeah. they're clipped here. Um, but essentially what they do is like this plugs right directly into the phone. Um, so it has an attachment that will go right into my iPhone. Yeah. So I can film on my iPhone, but my audio is like pristine, right? Because again, you load up a video and you can't hear it or it doesn't sound well you immediately turn it off because it's not professional. Right. And I think audio is one of the biggest, I'm an audio nut, nut nerd, right? So it's like audio is the biggest thing you can do to like set your video apart from others. And I, I anything you can do to go beyond the microphone on the MacBook or on the display audio right. or whatever you're using when you're filming, add something extra to it, whether it's just a little $20 lavalier that'll plug directly into your audio jack into your computer, that is better than nothing. Um, and that is one of the immediate, like John, I'm glad you said that, John, cause it is what I've always taught, right? Like it is the immediate turnoff for anybody watching the video. The moment you hear it, you're like, nope, done. I'm off. I can't hear it. I don't, I don't right. understand a word they're saying. The audio is cloudy. 
Um, but if it's pristine, you're more apt to stick around. So I'd like to share one story and I know we're, we're cutting close on time. So the last story from me, and then we can, we can talk a bit more if you want to is, so I presented a Doma Palooza this last year and I presented a topic I called if data is like cooking, how to keep a clean kitchen. And all I went over was naming conventions, tagging, keeping a clean ETL, nothing, nothing very advanced. Like what Mark is saying, uh, it's not gross, nothing really advanced. I just went over that at the same time. I showed how to make a grilled cheese at the same, I was doing it in unison, like cutting in, in and out. And I used Final Cut Pro, but you don't need to do any of that junk, but whatever. But I shot with good production quality, whatever. Uh, when I'm presenting, my face was always in the frame. I'm showing my screen and my face and I'm talking. And I had watched some other videos. And when I watch these other Domapalooza videos, it's just someone sharing their screen their face not in, and the audio was coming from their computer, it was very hard for me to hear. I had to turn up. I remember just jacking up my my volume, and I jacked it up on my monitor, and I was like, I cannot. It's like really hard. I had to put in my headphones to be able to kind of see what's going on there. And that's not engaging, right? When someone's just telling a story, you're just looking at a screen for like three minutes, and nothing's moving. It's not good. Just doing even this is way more engaging. So I would love to see everybody present at Doma Palooza, but it just being engaged like this would be great. And the payoff is there's apparently a senior exec at UPS who saw my video and she told uh, Mark Mon this, I think. And she's like, that video on the grilled cheese was like the best video I've seen on data stuff. So now I'm just grilled cheese guy. Don't even have a name anymore. <laughs> my, bap my new baptismal name is grilled oh, cheese guy. Man. Legally, oh, man. I've changed my name. Oh yeah. man, um, yeah. that is incredible. Uh, I have heard that story multiple times uh, over the last few weeks, and I can tell you right now um, that John Lee is now the main dude at Grilled Cheese Guy. Yeah, uh, Grilled so Cheese Dude. Really appreciate that we changed we changed the name there. Yeah. Sierra, any parting words for John Lee and and uh, our our guests joining us on the chat as we kind of wrap things up? Thank you to everyone for coming. Thank you, John and Eddie, for sharing a little bit of expertise with us. For those of you who are joined or for those of you who will be watching back later, we'll make sure that we have everything that was discussed today linked out for easy access. We'll be adding things into the swag store that you guys can redeem on Demo Innovators. And we'll also continue this conversation on the forums. We'll put you guys together in a group so that you can support one another, bounce ideas off of each other. And then of course, we'll continue to have opportunities through Demo Innovators for you guys to build content. If you have ideas about what content you want, for sure, let us know. But we appreciate you. Thank you everyone for joining.